about reducing jury awards when inevitably there is product tampering. Uh, we're often asked about seal sport, uh, a little bit like lock sport. Would it, this be a fun hobby? And in one sense, I wouldn't want to discourage that because I think it would highlight how bad seals really are, and in particular, how bad the average seal use protocol is. Uh, but frankly, right now, it's too easy. I, I don't see that it's that interesting a hobby. And the more important point is, what inspection protocol are you testing against? Uh, we can take even a very modest seal, and if you're willing to do enough work, do fairly reliable tamper detection. The problem is no one's willing to do that much work. So unlike a lock sport where you just attack the hardware and it's either open or not, this is a much more complex problem. Well, the good news is most of the seal attacks, that at least we've developed, uh, really have pretty simple in, uh, and inexpensive countermeasures. Uh, but the deal is the seal installers and inspectors have to understand really what they're doing. They have to have seen examples of attacks on the specific seal for the specific application for the specific vulnerabilities they have in mind. This is lots of hands-on training. Almost nobody, including for nuclear safeguards, wants to do this much work. On the other hand, we think that there are better seals are possible. So the question is, what's wrong with current seals? Well, with a conventional seal, you can detect the seal being opened or the tampering or the intrusion, but what do you do with that information? In a conventional seal, you store it in or on the seal, the fact that there's been uh, tampering or unauthorized access, maybe just from the seal being damaged. Well, we'd like to turn that around, and with an anti-evidence seal, when we first install the seal, we're going to store information in or on the seal. The tampering has not yet been detected. Then when it is, that gets immediately erased. Now there's nothing for the adversary to counterfeit. They can counterfeit the hardware, but if they don't know the correct anti-evidence information to put in or on the seal, they can't hide the fact that tampering has occurred. And indeed, we've developed, um, well, almost two dozen different kinds of anti-evidence seals. They have a lot of interesting attributes. We think better security. Uh, they can sometimes go inside a container rather than having to be on the outside. Uh, they're typically 100% reusable. And they have something called an anti-gun decking feature. Gun decking is an old Navy term from the uh, 18th century. When uh, you were in the British Navy, if you wanted to shirk your duties, you'd go hide out on the gun deck because unless a battle was underway, it was pretty quiet there. One of the problems with SEALs is the SEAL inspector, whether viewing the SEAL manually or with an automated reader, claims to have inspected the SEAL but really didn't. Well, if you require them to report back the anti-evidence information, which they can do through non-secure communications channels, because the bad guy can only be a nuisance. He can't substitute in information to hide the fact that tampering has <coughs> occurred. If you require this report in, the act of obtaining the anti-evidence is effectively the same as checking the seal. And there's an interesting possibility here, which makes most sense for international nuclear safeguards, namely treaty monitoring, where you can actually have the bad guys inspect the seal for you without the inspectors being present to demonstrate that there's been no tampering with the items that may have been dismantled or put in storage. I'll show you one um, anti-evidence seal here called the uh, Talking Truck Cargo Seal. We developed this for a fictitious trucking company called Near Miss Trucking. Uh, originally it was Acme Trucking, but it turns out there really is an Acme Trucking and we didn't want to get in trouble with them. Uh, basically the idea is that there's 125 slogans well known by employees of Near Miss Trucking. Uh, they're sick of these slogans, I've heard them so many times. They're not secret. But what is secret is the one slogan that's been chosen for this particular shipment. And here's just an example of some of the slogans. <laughs> so the idea is the, uh, when, the, when the truck reaches its destination, we're going to simply communicate with a radio frequency short range device. It's going to provide a password, because this is a password anti-evidence seal, that says, I'm the good guy. It's perfectly OK to tell me the anti-evidence. And the anti-evidence in this case is a spoken slogan. So if the guys on the loading dock or the receiving dock hear the correct slogan, there's been no tampering. If they hear nothing or a different slogan, we like to feed the wrong slogan if there's been tampering so the bad guys aren't tipped off that they've been detected. Then they'll know that there's been some kind of tampering. So we'll go ahead and demonstrate this seal.
So here's the seal itself. If it looks kludged up, that's, well, because it is. We have a light sensor on it. Traditionally, we hate light sensors. They're very easy to beat, but they make for good demos because people understand them. I'm, light sensors, uh, well, yeah, they're just very easy to beat. So anyway, we're just going to turn this thing on. Now, here's an, here's an example of an electronic reader. AMS Trucking Proprietary Security System, developed by Argonne National Laboratory's Vulnerability Assessment Team, ready for programming. Sorry about the intro, but we got to... I should say it's uh, my voice because my students always said I'd like to hear myself talk. Your hometown truckers. Your hometown truckers. Now monitoring. Okay, so the slogan chosen for this period is your hometown truckers. This thing could be sitting in a warehouse, might be in shipment, who knows. When it gets inspected, you inquire, and if it hasn't been tampered with, you hope to hear the same slogan. Tamper inquiry one. Your hometown truckers. Your hometown truckers. Your hometown truckers. Now, if you've got some sort of adversary that gets in your container and doesn't know how to work in the dark, and they trip the light sensor, you come back in inspection time and you inquire, you hope to hear, or you should hear a, a different slogan. Tamper inquiry two. Your cargo is safe. <laughs> Your cargo is safe. Nice choice. <laughs> so why do we do a different slogan? Well, we don't want to tip our hat, our hand, that the, you've been caught. If they can go into the microprocessor, which is pretty easy because it's sitting right here, especially on this model, they can see that, well, a byte's there or not there. In this case, we just swap out a different byte and you're none the wiser. So the original byte's gone completely, new byte's been inserted. The key point is once tampering or intrusion is detected, the information needed to generate the correct slogan is instantly erased within less than a microsecond, so that information is gone. Now, the adversary can counterfeit the hardware, but without knowing what the right slogan was, they basically have a problem. Yeah, the question was whether the adversary knows about whether you have this piece of hardware and how to access the, the uh, slogan. Uh, there essentially is a password, and the electronics are looking for an attempt to hack in or a physical intrusion into the actual microprocessor. So the hope is that the sensors that are associated with the device itself, including the, uh, the seal, uh, would detect any attempt to go in and try to get the, the slogan. But certainly if anyone can break in and get the slogan, then, the problem, then there's a problem. The slogan itself is not stored in the reader, but is actually stored in the seal. Yeah, one more question. Uh, you potentially could, but without the password, the seal refuses to respond. No, so, so the, the no, no, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's random. So and you don't know the correct slogan, so you would mute it. Ah, Roger. Roger. Mm -hmm. The yes, you you could, but the slogan that's chosen is supposed to be a secret, and if you're the bad guy, you don't hopefully know what that secret slogan was that was chosen for the... Yeah, That's true. If you've got the secret... inside man would compromise, absolutely. An insider threat compromises any security well, device. Uh, well, the... Right. Well, essentially, this is designed for a one-time opening. Now, you can program in. Sometimes cargo stops several different places. But typically, the typical scenario is a company shipping from here to there, and it just should never be opened. So you're not typically going to be allowed multiple openings. But it's a good question. Did your identifier also give a numerical sequence as to when the injury occurred? At the first, it was, you know, first injury. So if you had done that multiple times, you would know it. Well, yeah, the question is about the initial, um, when you hear the first slogan, that's, of course, done at secure shipping locations. The adversary is hopefully not present. Now, if he intercepts the slogan at, at your shipping department. Oh, absolutely. Right. Essentially, no technology takes away.